Hi, I'm Dave Mulligan. You know, some of my very favorite memories from my childhood are road trips, when we load up the car and head out for an adventure. It's the first time on this show. Welcome to Great Getaways, Southern Oregon. In the southern end of the Rogue River Valley is the quaint town of Ashland. With Lithia Park at its center, it's a nature lover's paradise. Ashland's claim to fame, however, is the world-renowned Oregon Shakespeare Festival. When we come back, we'll get on stage and behind the curtain. Huzzah! Great Getaways Southern Oregon is brought to you by members of the Southern Oregon Visitors Association. We're here now in Martino's, which apparently is the place to come after the plays here in Ashland at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. This is Kate, star in one of the plays that's running. Kate, what play are you? Well, first of all, we don't say star. It's an ensemble piece. An uh, ensemble. Right now I'm in uh, Sorry. the Language Archive in the new theater. Where we are now is the very heart of the Language Archive, a 500 strong collection of priceless tapes and recordings. Are you an actor or an actress? Uh, I call myself an actor. You can feel so sad, it begins to feel like happiness. You don't say doctress or lawyeress, it's a doctor, a lawyer, an actor. And she's also a comedian's dress. <laughs> so a lot of times you're doing two plays at once, sometimes three, while you're also understudying one, sometimes two plays. Founded in 1935, the Tony Award-winning OSF is among the oldest and largest theaters in the country. With three stages, the company will present more than 750 live performances, some Shakespeare, some contemporary, and even musicals. A face you're sure to recognize from television and in films like Silence of the Lambs is Tony Heald, a regular player here in Ashland who's certainly at home on the stage. Be impartial. Be you judge of your own cause. Whoa. The reason I'm an actor, one of the reasons I'm an actor is I love to solve problems. I'm a puzzle solver. I look for the clues and, and gradually build behavior that underscores and illustrates the text and tells the story. Find be really interesting, evocative, illustrative behavior. I mean, for this Measure for measure, I, I read 40 books and you know, I, I researched it for four months, five months. And then you've got 250 hours of rehearsal to go through it. This disturbing sky is not to walk in. It's nice to play a villain. It really is because you can enter into an imaginative space that you really can't enter into in your own regular life. And uh, it kind of purges you. For the first time, I'm working in the new theater, which is a, a reconfigurable space that can go from full round to alley to three quarter. You know, it's very adjustable. So it's a very innovative production, very much involving the audience. You can talk with the audience two, three times a week. And it's great because it's not like talking to one individual. You've got a group that may have a, a variety, that will have a variety of opinions. Oh, so you think Lucio and Isabella yeah, should yeah, get together? No, I, like it. I think you and Isabella. Oh, <laughs> thank oh, you. And so you really get a sense of what's coming across to the audience. I'm more satisfied as an artist here than I've ever been in my life. There's no place that I've ever worked where you get the support that you get here. There are no audiences that I've ever performed for that are like the audiences here. You don't need to go to New York, you don't need to go to Chicago, you don't need to go to London or Los Angeles. All you need to do is come to Ashland, Oregon, and you will see some of the finest theater you have ever seen in your life. Encore. Encore. No visit to Ashland is complete without a visit to Applegate Valley and jumping on the Applegate Wine Trail. These are Cabernet vines planted back in the 70s and about to burst forth with more Cabernet just like this. Just minutes beyond the historic town of Jacksonville, the Applegate Valley is home to more than 18 wineries. Its fertile soil and mild climate are perfect for a vineyard. 
What started with just a few tiny wineries has grown into an important wine growing region, producing a diverse range of high quality wines. It really makes people have a really exciting time to try lots of different wines, great values, similar wines and a similar wine tasting uh, quality experience that they're used to really anywhere on the West Coast. We have the largest concentration of wineries in Southern Oregon, so you can hit a lot of different wineries and we have such a diverse selection of wines that you can try 10 or 12 different wine varieties in as little as two or three different wineries. So you get a lot of different uh, diversity. Really the, the true thing is that the quality across the board and the value is some of the best you're going to find anywhere in the world. Just 15 minutes north of Ashland is the city of Medford, an eclectic and diverse launching pad for your exploration of Southern Oregon, starting with world famous Harry and David. We've always been great for holidays, we're always great for gift giving, but one of the things you'll notice on our catalog online and in our stores is we're really about easy entertaining. So not only do you want to give it as a gift, but it's something that you want to keep around the house because we can make your life a lot easier. We're really taking Harry and David and that brand and we're taking ordinary products and we're making them extraordinary and easy for you to use in your uh, own home. Uh, Centennial Golf Club is pretty fortunate. We've been uh, voted the, the best golf course in the Rogue Valley the last several years. We really feel we've done a great job on the condition of the golf course, the design of the golf course. It's just a fun test uh, in a great area. Being right on I-5, we get a lot of people from, uh, from the Bay Area coming through here, and uh, they're really surprised at our fees. Uh, they're, they're very reasonable for comparing the fees that are in the Bay Area. So it's a great value, and they'll have a wonderful time on the course. You know, golf is always a nice way to add to your, to your extended stay. Day. You know, one of the things that's really unusual about the Rogue River watershed is we've just recently, within the past few years, had three dams removed. So, you know, with the dam removals, the water temperature's dropping a little, the fish are getting healthier, the salmon and steelhead runs are going to start looking better, and I mean, everything's just looking up for the overall health of the watershed. And if we have a healthier river, everything around it's going to be healthier from the recreation to the people, and you know, who doesn't love diving in a pristine river when it's a hot and toasty summer day? We didn't have a lot of vineyards or wineries back 25 years ago, but in the last 10 years especially, we've seen the numbers of vineyards being planted and wineries being started here really uh, just multiply. And so we're very fortunate being in the hub of the Rogue Valley here in, in the center of Medford. We're yet a very young emerging region, and so people have a chance to discover us here. You know, we're not world renowned. You know, that's the truth of it. We wanna be, but I think it, it'll, it'll take time. And in the meantime, the visitors here really get to experience us much like they got to experience Napa in the 1960s and early 70s. Somewhat rural in flavor, yet thoroughly modern, Medford is a growing town that not only embraces its wine roots, but also its historic railroading past. In my opinion, you know, 100 years ago, public buildings were sort of a respite from everyday life. You know, you might live in a modest situation, but you could come to a great public building, a federal building or a railroad station, and feel like you had a little touch of the elegance that maybe the upper classes did. The buildings were so beautifully constructed, and, they, and you go to the Grand Central Station or some of the great public buildings in America, and you feel good when you're there. This building to me is that way. We fell in love with it instantly, and our business plan went out the window, you know, you fall in love with the structure and couldn't wait to do a concept. What we try to do here at Schmidt is combine the gardening, uh, flowers, botanicals with our wine. Each one of our wine bottles has a uh, herb on it that we feel pairs with the food that pairs with the wine. And uh, we just try to keep a botanical theme here. People love to come out and see the gardens and it just makes it a very pleasant place to be with a glass of wine. The Applegate Wine Trail is, is such that if you really want to do it justice, you, you, you would probably have to spend a couple days out here. There are so many excellent uh, wineries and excellent wines and every winery is, is unique and different and people when they come out here they, they should plan on spending uh, getting out here sometime around noon and spend the afternoon out here do a few wineries and then we get done with the wine tasting for the day Jacksonville is a great place to go eat. Built in 1946 Morrison's Rogue River Lodge provides guests with a charming wilderness experience 
and comfortable lodging in one of their rustic Riverview cottages. I'd like to start by saying that to me this is escape from the ordinary. Uh, if you're in the city and you and you have the hustle and bustle of the city, this is a place to get away and completely relax and enjoy the great outdoors. Morrison's Lodge is a unique opportunity for a number of reasons. They do have a feel of being in the country. Each of our cabins over here have fireplaces and during either the spring or the fall we, we set your fireplace up and all you need to do is light it and we clean it the next day and each one of the cabins have a deck where you can sit there and just enjoy the river as it goes by. There's a great view of the river from each one of the cabins. It really is unique from a hotel experience. Max just loves this place. You know, he's out looking for frogs and turtles and he's loving the, the wilderness of it all. You know, I, I think it's a place where our whole family can get together, enjoy each other. You know, I really think we found that here at Morrison's. Heading north along I-5, we enter the land of Umpqua and our first big surprise, Seven Feathers. Poised like a great bird in the wilderness, Seven Feathers is a resort that rivals any in Vegas. Well, I think as a first impression, uh, when people do find out about us and do uh, take the opportunity and visit us, they're going to look at just how well maintained and, and what we've done here as far as preparing this facility for our guests. Max is happy anywhere, but especially in an elegant hotel with a huge indoor pool to satisfy his inner guppy. And the games here are for kids, too. The recently expanded arcade may just be the highlight of Max's whole trip. This arcade is totally wicked! Know that simply because you're away from the big city here, there's no shortage of luxury, especially when speaking of accommodations. Some of us are accustomed to being a little spoiled, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Your room or suite here will likely be the spot where you'll feel the most coddled on your Southern Oregon road trip. It was for us. The Camas Room is our signature outlet here at the facility. It is an upscale dining facility. We offer uh, Northwest cuisine, steaks, seafood. It's absolutely a wonderful dining experience. And Wendy and I will certainly vouch for that. Our meal at the Camas Room was a dinner fit for a king and a queen. This is a full Nevada style casino in the sense that we offer slot machines, table games, live kino, live bingo, poker, along with all of the other amenities that we do uh, as far as the total package here. What is it about gaming that gets the blood going so? Sure, the prospect of winning riches beyond your wildest dreams is exciting, but even if you just win a few bucks, or none at all, the experience is like no other. This is the most wonderful casino. They gave me free slot play, and I won money on it. After we can get them in the door, I know that we can wow them not only with the facility, but with what we are very proud of, our guest services here. And I do run into a lot of individuals from the Bay Area. Quite frankly, they're somewhat shocked when they do travel through here and do take the opportunity to stop at just what an upscale facility this is and the different amenities that we do have to offer. Oh, poor Wendy. Wherever we travel for great getaways, we always somehow manage to find a spa. And the River Rock here at Seven Feathers is as fulfilling as any we visited around the world. From head to toe, literally in this case, she was attended to and pampered by the professional staff. She definitely considered this to be the most relaxing afternoon of her entire week. But don't hate her, she really does deserve it. We get a lot of great compliments for our facility. We are the, only one of the top 19 RV resorts in the country that have a 10-10-10 rating. It's a rating of overall cleanliness, facility amenities, and overall facility location and what it has to offer. For those of you who choose to road trip in the comfort of a recreational vehicle, the Seven Feathers RV Resort is like the Beverly Hills of all RV resorts. I've never seen one like it in all my travels. The amenities include the park's own indoor pool for a dip or a few laps, plus any other comforts you could possibly need. And that's Seven Feathers, the biggest surprise so far of Southern Oregon. Next up on our road trip is Roseburg, the hub of the land of Umpqua and gateway to Crater Lake. It's a great job, you know, one of the things I like about my job is I meet people from all over the world, all over the United States. They come down here to Southern Oregon and one of the reasons they come here 
is, is the great fishing opportunities that we have in this area. We fish all year round. Any time of the year you come here, we can catch you fish. Most of the fishing we do are from what we call drift boats, and they're boats specially made for shallow water and for real rough rapids. We do a lot of fly fishing, and we do general fishing also. Okay, we have 30 miles of river on the North Umpqua, and that's fly fishing only. So we do what we call walk trips. We drive up the river, then we do the fly fishing in that area. If you want to have a great time, great vacation, come to Southern Oregon. We can take you fishing and you'll just have a wonderful time down here. A lot of stuff to do. The Umpqua Valley, Oregon's oldest wine region, is home to dozens of wineries, including Abacella. The climate here in the Umpqua Valley is fantastic. It supports a great spectrum of wine grape growing. Uh, the favorite grape for us is Tempranillo. That is, uh, I guess we could say, the lady we brought to the dance, and she's done very well for us. We also grow Albarino, another Spanish grape. We grow Syrah, Dolcetto, Grenache, uh, lots of varieties. This area has about 25 wineries in the land of the Umpqua. They range from very small to fairly uh, sizable wineries, each offering a different experience that uh, kind of builds as you go from place to place. Now the map still says Roseburg, but the animals here suggest a different place entirely. Wildlife Safari is noted for its cheetahs. We produce more cheetah babies than any uh, institution in the Northern Hemisphere. And in fact, the park got its start as a cheetah breeding center, then worked into a drive through park. So you have two different dynamics here. You have the opportunity to spend time with endangered species like cheetahs. You get to be able to get up close and personal to like say for elephants. And then you also get the opportunity to drive through the park more of an African type safari where the animals all roam free. Very unique experience that you don't get short of going to Africa. We're different than a zoo. You know, a zoo is much more closed in and very rarely an opportunity to actually touch or, or feed the animals. We have custom tours where we actually can load kids up in hay trailers, we take them out and they can feed the Sika deer. We can load them up in another vehicle and they can actually go out and hand feed the giraffes. And so, super unique opportunities. You know, obviously we're in tough economic times and just a chance to get away, even if it's for a day, and get away from problems, it's really a special place to come to. Our entire village area is all free to the public. You have an opportunity to come to Wildlife Safari if you want to pack a lunch and you can see a, a massive amount of animals at no cost at all. If you want to go on the custom tours, most of them are like 10 bucks. So you can come up, spend the day, not spend a lot of money, have a great time and feel like you've just gotten away from those problems for a short period of time. Heading east along the Umqua River, there are hundreds of waterfalls just off the highway, including the highest in all of Oregon. Sometimes in life you just have to stop and smell the roses, or in this case, that pure Oregon water. Specifically, on Highway 138 between Roseburg and Klamath Falls at mile marker 61. This is Watson Falls. There's something almost cathedral-like here in the majestic forests of Southern Oregon. And the word Umqua, which means thundering water, makes perfect sense as we make our way up to the base of Watson Falls. Crater Lake National Park is like nowhere else on Earth. Impossibly deep and blue, her calm appearance today conceals a violent volcanic youth. And she is the source for every river we've enjoyed thus far. Our next stop along the volcanic legacy scenic byway is Klamath Falls. Not just pretty to look at, there is so much to see and do here. Home to the largest lake in Oregon, it's a bird lover's paradise and may have more bald eagles than any place in the country. Adding nostalgia to the downtown charm is the Raglan Theater, a gem from the 1940s. It was slated for demolition in the late 80s. It had kind of fell into disrepair. And, and Mr. Ross Raglan and a group of others got together and said, no, they wanted a performing arts theater in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Klamath Falls is a, a nice uh, town. It's got about 40,000 people. It's a quaint little town. It's casual. It's fun to visit. There's great places to eat. There's great theater. There's plenty to do. There's nature in the city. I just love living in Oregon. There's so much to do. The people are friendly and there's just an abundance of nature and activity that it's something for everyone. Come down and see it. A childhood dream turned into a lifetime achievement for philanthropist Jean Favel. Well, I think that when Mr. Favel put the museum together, he recognized that all people don't know everything about Indians. And so this has a lot of Indian artifacts from many cultures. And so he has uh, augmented that with 
artwork in order to help explain what these people were doing. Well, we have some ancient artifacts over 12,000 years old. It starts, I guess, about that time, and then it goes uh, all the way up until the settlers began coming in and the cavalry and settlement of the West. We're very proud of many things, actually, uh, with regard to the artifacts, because we have so many and such a variety. The one that Mr. Fable was most proud of was the opal arrowhead. It is a very small arrowhead, but beautifully flaked perfect, actually. I would doubt that there are very few museums in the United States who have the variety that we have here and the many cultures that are represented. Set amongst the towering Ponderosa Pines is the Collier Memorial State Park and Logging Museum. Here at Collier we've got a lot of machinery and the machinery that we have here really represents an evolution in logging. It really started back with horses and oxen. Early on they used a crosscut saw, they called it a misery whip oftentimes for good reason. They couldn't get very much volume out that way, and they were interested in moving, uh, in moving stuff a lot quicker. And so what they ended up doing was they started building more machinery. The museum that we have here and the, the artifacts that we have here really represent that evolution, that movement, that change from the, really the turn of the century up through probably about 1970. The logging is still considered uh, within the top three of the most dangerous jobs. They were tough people that lived back then. Not an easy lifestyle. They worked long, hard days. I, I think probably most of us couldn't handle it very well today. No, we got an easy lifestyle compared to the way they had it. Just a few minutes north of Klamath Falls on the banks of the Williamson River is Lonesome Duck, one of Oregon's premier fly fishing lodges. It's definitely unique in terms of what we have to offer. We have a couple miles of riverfront, we have a pond, we have the llamas, we have horses. So it's just an outdoor experience that a lot of people just don't get to have down in the city. Then pull it off the water and push it forward and push it forward. The cottages here come complete with their own practice pond and novices are welcome. My brother and Wendy certainly fit that description. They come up and the attitude is, please show us something that we can't do in our everyday life. They enjoy the peacefulness, the quiet, they enjoy the lifestyle of being out here on the river. I mean, it's really, uh, it's fulfilling in that way. To learn more about this bird watching mecca, we met with Cindy Diaz, local birding expert. The Klamath Basin is, according to Sunset Magazine, one of the top birding hotspots in the Northwest. We have over 350 birding species. We have uh, year-round birding. You can come up here and see almost anything, any time of the year. Our peak migration times are during the fall and the spring. I can go out my back door and I might have six or seven species of birds right in my backyard. We have this incredible natural resource that I don't think a lot of people have. And you're not going to go out and see a hundred Ross's geese. You're going to go out and see tens of thousands of Ross's geese during peak migration seasons. I mean, you will never see so many birds flying in the air at one time. You're going to see bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, uh, northern harriers, uh, rough-legged hawks. You name it, we've got it. From green and lush, we transition to harsh, dry, and rocky yet still hauntingly beautiful. Well, my friend Jim at Klamath County promised diversity and he certainly delivered. This is Lava Beds National Monument where over about 500,000 years, the lava erupted from the earth and then slowly withdrew, leaving what's called lava tubes. In fact, at last count, there were over 777, which are essentially caves. We're gonna investigate one right now. Let's go into the icy depths of Skull Cave. Well, it's any time we don't know something, life is amazing. And that's part of the things here is we've started to discover a lot more of the caves. Most of them are unimproved, so you have to look for them to be able to get into them. But we do have a large number of improved caves that you can go into as well. And they're still a mystery because they've been so unknown for so long, there could be things there that we don't even know about yet. And, you know, that's just amazing. Long ago, this harsh landscape was the home of the Modoc Indians and site of a fierce Indian war where a few Modocs, led by their chief, Captain Jack, held off an army for months by hiding in the caves. We're at the base of Skull Cave now, so named because years ago, the discoverers found skulls way down beneath the ice. They could see them glaring up through the ice. We're going to turn the lights out now and just see how dark it is. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, oh, my, oh my gosh! Okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, it was dark, all right. <laughs> and that makes our final stop. Wow, 
from wineries to waterfalls, from Shakespeare to an African safari. It's been quite an adventure. Well, we're on our way home from our first ever road trip on Great Getaways. I fell in love with the charm and the beauty of Southern Oregon. I love traveling with my family, and I'm so glad that you get to come along for the ride. We'll see you next time, somewhere around the world, and right here on Great Getaways. Great big Mulligan family thanks for our accommodations provided by the Plaza Inn and Suites in Ashland, Seven Feathers in the Land of Umpqua, and the Microtel Inn, Klamath Falls. Ooh.